Hi, this is Jack from Alpha Charts with a Stocks to Watch video. Today is 7-18-2021. It's July 18th, 2021. Uh, before we get started, this video is for educational purposes only. These are not recommendations to buy, sell, or hold any stock or security. And I may hold positions in some of the equities mentioned. Know your time frame and risk tolerance. All right, so... Um, I wanted to try to increase my viewership and get some more likes on my on my stream. So I went ahead and uh, we went ahead and got a puppy. And so this is Stella, and I'm training Stella to look at charts with me and to um, hopefully help uh, you know find the best of the best charts for you guys. So again, uh, increasing you know puppies, you know always increase views and likes and all that kind of stuff. So uh, so this is Miss Stella over here. All right. So she'll be uh, working with me today. Um, and so it's markets have been pretty rough. Um, so there's not a lot of stocks to watch, to be honest with you. Um, this is more of a relative strength edition. Uh, but I do want to go over some of the stuff I went over at my state of the market video. And I think that this is going to be um, uh, real important, especially if you didn't see this. So I won't do the whole video again, but I'm going to do a couple of real relevant things. Um, SPX you know, broke out and now it's kind of coming back in with RSP is RSP, you know, never broke out and was been showing the divergence. It looks like it's confirming that divergence now. So I think that this is going to be um, something major, you know, basically it shows that the mega caps were holding up the market. And I have some other charts that kind of show this also, you know, looking at the cues, you know, I was looking at the Fibonacci retracement or extension actually um, from highs and lows over here. It came up right to that area. And again, on the monthly, we're only halfway through the month, but you know, it doesn't look terrible, but it did come basically reach that point. You see, we were just, you know, a few ticks shy of that point. And it looks like it's being turned away. Now, could we come down here and, and retest 342 or something like that? I think it's really possible. I think that's the area that I'm watching to see if it holds or not. That's that's gonna be really, really important, this 342-ish area. All right, IWO, small cap growth, you know, back in its range. Again, if it gets below 280-ish, I think that's a big deal. Uh, so that's something I'm watching. Uh, let's see, SMH. You know, SMH kind of tried to break out and now has that waterfall look to it, you know, back in a range again. Um, it, may, it may come to the bottom of this range and then we'll have to see what happens, but it's on big volume. So that's a big deal. Uh, what else? You see the value line geometric index, you know, it was a divergence I've been talking about and it looks like it's price is confirming to the downside. That's a negative. Um, MMFI percent of stocks above the 50 day moving average, uh, you know, kind of in no man's land, but definitely on that decline, lower highs, lower lows, look, not looking so hot um, uh, column, right? Bond ratios that I like to look at. Here's, a, here's the bond ratio. And, um, you know, I'm looking for things that look like this, right? And I'm not seeing that quite yet. Now, this could be the start of something like that, but we don't see it quite yet. This gets me much, much more bearish. You know, something like this says this is, you know, the normal 10 to 15% pullback that the market does, you know, every so often to keep everybody in check. So right now, not overly concerned, longer term, more of a, you know, short to intermediate, you know, concern, which could still be very painful and very costly. But if I see something that shows shoots up like this, that gets me much, much more um, bearish in the, especially the longer term. Um, put call ratio, you know, it's kind of in no man's land, so it shows some complacency. Up here would be more of a capitulation type uh, situation, and that's what I'm looking for. And then, of course, I want to look at Bitcoin charts, actually. Bitcoin dollar, that's fine. Um, yeah, so here's the Bitcoin chart and, you know, this 31,000 ish area is continuing to hold, I think, over the next week or so, probably say 10 days. 
it's gonna be very interesting because we're gonna start to wipe out some of these candles on the 23 day, which has kind of led it to the downside. Uh, and so we're gonna see if, if price can get back above it and start building a bottom or base, or if it gets, if it moves higher, okay? And, and I'm looking at Bitcoin more as indicator of risk on risk off. And right now it keeps knocking at the door, you know, tapping on the, the ice as somebody uh, recently uh, made the analogy, you know, and every time it taps, it's a greater chance that ice could crack and break and could fall in. These fibs have been, um, so far has been important over here. So this 20,000, 20,400 ish level, 2200, um, 20,200 level, that could be an area if it does break to uh, of the next potential support level um you know so we'll, we'll see what happens but this it looks like a major top forming in bitcoin but it's still holding above the level that it needs to hold now some um catalysts you know so we saw that the market's being held by mega caps being held up by mega caps uh you know earnings in amazon which has looked really good but now it's starting to roll over is um uh since july 18th is that right yeah, I guess July 18th. Um, Apple. No, it can't be July 18th. That's July 27th on Apple. Amazon. Oh, it says July 18th. I don't know. Maybe. I don't, I'm not sure what that's saying. Oh, right, it doesn't matter. Amazon. And then there's obviously Google also. All these big, gigantic mega caps. Um, July 27th on this one. All these mega caps are kind of holding up the market right now. If they were to turn over after earnings, um, that would be maybe that thrust to the downside that would go ahead and maybe cause that capitulatory type move. Again, it may only be 10 to 15% in the market, but in your portfolio, it may feel like much, much bigger. All right, I have eight names on my relative strength stocks to watch. Let's go through them. Again, I'm not buying any of these yet. I want to see what the market does, and uh, and we'll go from there, okay? First one is going to be CrowdStrike. Broke out, retesting the breakout. Again, if it falls below 245-ish, um, you know, then obviously it's going to have resistance overhead, and that would be a false breakout, and that would be a very negative on, on the um stock if it holds this area then that would obviously be a very positive uh glbe new ipo you know potential high tech flag ipo um you know it's a little loose in here but it's definitely one that i'm watching and seeing what happens with this one that's glbe asan um this one you know i should have bought here didn't uh it ran up very nicely and now it's just kind of consolidating again, holding up way better than the market, late volume on this pullback. Uh, so definitely when I'm watching another potential high tech flag candidate, right? So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, high tech flag candidate uh, right over here. So we like that one very, very much. If it continues to be constructive, NTLA um, had a big gigantic gap up. And consolidating now on much lower volume, uh, you know, still holding up well versus the market and again versus gap. So watching this one to see if it continues. Another potential leader, um, DocuSign, right? DocuSign holding up really, really well, you know, broke out. And again, no retests or anything like that. So uh, looks good. Again, nice volume coming in. Um, yeah, I mean, nothing, nothing negative about this one. You know, changing the way we work and do business, right? All parts of our life. Tandem, I haven't looked at this one in a while, but it showed up on my scans. Um, this has been a very important area and it is now, yeah, I think the 100 level is gonna be the, you know, the psychological as well as technical level to, to beat. You know, it gets above 100, 102-ish. Um, I think it's a nice place to manage risk against. Earnings coming up on August 4th as Tandem. SRC is a REIT, Spirit Realty Capital, um, holding up nice. Um, you know, again, just what I'm watching, you know, it looks like it's trying to make a little bit of a bottom consolidation while the market falls apart. So we'll see what happens. You know, no, no touch for me yet, just watching it. Um, and the last one is VLRS. VLRS had earnings. Um, 
on July 15th, it looks like, you know, kind of sold off, you know, gapped up and sold off. So not the prettiest of candles, but it's holding up better than the market. Um, so definitely one I'm going to watch and see what happens. It's a Mexican airline. So you know what you're buying, I guess, you know, position size accordingly. But again, it's made nice stair steps higher from the lows of what, two to three dollars, whatever it was back here. So it's done pretty good um, with the rebound play. We'll see if it continues. All right. Here's what I got. Hope you all um, hope you have a safe week. Be safe out there. Be nimble. Know your stops. If you're still in the market, if you're not in the market, you know, watch, make that watch list. There's eight names I gave you, which I hope help. Um, puppy, like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much. And uh, you all have a great day.